All right, we're going to be transforming some matrices again. This is matrices as functions, part B. All right, let's see what happens here. All right, so now we're going to actually do, like, a composition of two linear transformations. This means you're going to apply one transformation, see what happens, and then you're going to apply another one right after it, okay? So if we have transformation T and U, and we denote it by this, where U is the first transformation, right? Like, you can see that in there, like, u is the first thing that affects the vector. Then whatever I get from that, then I do my t transformation. All right, that's what this means. We apply u, then we apply t. So let's take a look at that. What does that mean? So let's say we have a vector, all right? And we have this thing, and we apply our first transformation to it. That's a transformer, all right? Then we take our new one, and we transform whatever we got out of that, and we transform it again with this toy dinosaur. What do the resulting two transformations do? Well, we get an overall transformation. So if we take it, we transform it, and we transform it with a toy dinosaur, we get a toy dinosaur transformer. Okay, that was terrible. But hopefully you see the point. We're going to be doing two things, and it's going to affect it greater, right? We have to remember, this is really important, okay? All right. Now, I know this is really wordy. If transformation T is associated with matrix A, okay, and transformation U with matrix B, the product of these matrices is actually going to be the composition of the function. So I could do A and B, and I can multiply them together, and it'll be, be the uh, overall composition, the transformation. All right, that's amazing. And now, here's why, though. So, again, uh, this is A, and U is B, and this is our vector. Now, I need you to understand something here. We are applying B first. So when we multiply these things, A and B is different than B and A. Matrix multiplication is not commutative, all right? You cannot just switch the order. It does change things. So you really have to look here, and you have to say, when I'm multiplying these things, it needs to go in a very particular order. And whatever I'm multiplying first actually goes here. And it then, because that's a 2 by 2, then I'm going to multiply my matrix A by that, all right? Because it's very specific, I have a 2 by 2, and my vector or excuse, uh, is a 2 by 1 matrix, I have to match these up. My 2 by 2 always has to be in front of it. I cannot have my 2 by 2 at the end. So even though I'm doing A times B, A is the matrix that I would apply last, in this case, T. So I'm applying U first, so I'm, it would be A times B, and that's going to give me a matrix that is the overall composition, all right? But I have to do it in this order because we always have to put our two by two first so that the dimensions match. So if we look at this, we're doing u times my, my vector. So that means, remember, u is b. So that means I'm doing four, six, negative two, three, and I'm gonna multiply it by my vector, four, three. And whatever I get, then I'm going to multiply it by A, 3, 2, 0, 1. All right? Now, we want to know what is the associated matrix. I can multiply these two things together right off the bat. 3, 2, 0, 1, A times B, 4, 6, negative 2, 3. I can multiply those things right off the bat and get a an associated matrix that is the overall composition. So let's do that. So I have 2 by 2 by 2 by 2. I'm going to have a uh, 2 by 2 in my end. So first row times my first column. So 3 times 4 is 12. And 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. First row, second column. 3 times 6 is 18. And 2 times 3 is 6. All right, down here, second row, 0 times 4 is 0. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 
0 times 6 is 0. 1 times 3 is 3. So my associated matrix, the matrix that I'm going to say this actually takes both of my um, transformations into context, and I can multiply this and get my end result, would be 824, negative 2, 3. So that is my associated matrix. Now that's going to be easily, it's going to easily allow me to do my composition of transformations. So I'm going to multiply that. 824 and negative 2, 3 times my matrix. All right, in this case, or times my vector. In this case, my vector is 4, 3. 4, 3. So here we go. I'm going to multiply. I got 8 times 4 is 32. 24 times 4 is 96. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. 3 times 3 is 9. So in the end, we have, I believe, 128 and 1. So our vector, our transformed vector, went from 4, 3, and we did a composition of transformations, and we ended with 128 and 1. All right, let's try another one. You'll notice this says T and U. Remember, T is A and B is U. So in this case, I'm actually going to multiply B times A to get my associated matrix. So that means I'm going to do 4, 6, negative 2, 3, times A, 3, 2, 0, 1. So I want you to multiply those together and tell me what my associated matrix is, and then give me the new transformed vector, okay? So pause the video and try this one on your own. All right, find the associated matrix to the composition of transformations with a reflection across the x-axis. We'll call that U and a rotation counterclockwise of T. All right, so we have two. This is the very first thing that is going to happen. So that would be the first matrix I would multiply my vector by. And then T would be the second one because it's on the outside. So let's look here. What is this transformation? A reflection across the x-axis is when my y values change, right? So my x values stay the same, and I have negative y values. So the matrix for that would be 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And over here, counterclockwise, that's cosine of pi over 2, negative sine of pi over 2 sine of pi over 2 and cosine of pi over 2. So, again, this one is going first, so that is actually my second matrix. Remember, it's my second matrix because it's the very first thing I would multiply. And order matters with these matrices. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0, negative 1, 1, and 0. So let's multiply these out and see what we get. So, 0 times 1 is 0, negative 1 times uh, 0 is 0, good. Then I have uh, 0 times 0 is 0, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, and 0 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, and 0 times negative 1 is 0, which gives us our new associated matrix of 0, 1, 1, 0. All right, there you have it. All right, we're going to use inverses now with some linear transformations. And what this says is, suppose T is a little linear transformation represented by the matrix A. Given that we have some vector 10, 4, find the vector U that was transformed by A to get V. So what does that mean? So I have a vector U. And it was transformed by A. So A times U gave me our new vector V. Well, I have A. That's 1, 1, 4, 2. I don't have U. But I have vector V, 10, 4. 
right? And I can write that as such. So how do we do this? Well, like, if this was just a simple two-step equation, it would be easy. Divide by 2, x equals uh, 2, no problem, right? But another way to look at it is I have to do the inverse operation here. So I'm going to do the inverse. So I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply by the inverse. And the inverse is really 1 half, which gives me the same answer. But it helps this a little bit now. So I'm going to multiply this side by the inverse and this side by the inverse. All right. Now the trick here is we have to keep our order of operations such that our matrices work. So we're going to have to do the inverse of matrix A times our vector V, because that's a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 1. So let's recall, how do I find an inverse? All right, that is 1 over AD minus BC. I flip D and A, and I do the opposites of B and C. So AD, 1 times 2. BC is 4. D and A, so these switch, so this is 2 and this is 1. And this is going to be negative 1 and negative 4. So I have really negative 1 half times 2, negative 1, negative 4, 1. So my inverse is going to be negative 1, positive 1 half, 2, and negative 1 half. All right. So let's put that over here. Negative 1, 1 half, 2, negative 1 half. And now let's multiply that by our matrix, or excuse me, our vector V, and see what we get. So negative 1 times 10 is negative 10. Half of 10 is then, oh, excuse me, half of 4 is then 2. 2 times 10 is 20. Negative half of 4 is negative 2. So we would have negative 8 and 18. In other words, if we started with the vector negative 8, 18, multiplied it by our transformation, matrix A, we would have gotten matrix V. And there you have it. All right, I know that was a lot. I'm really sorry about that. I think you can handle it, though. All right, best of luck on this one. That wraps up uh, 4.13. Ooh, you guys are so close to being done. All right, till next time, Sully out.